Well, good morning. Let's go ahead and let's stand and let's worship together this morning.
Father, we thank you for that love that's so deep. <laughs> Lord, Paul prays for us in, in Scripture. 
that we would know how high and how deep and how wide is the love of God. And that's my prayer for all of us today, those of us in this room, those of us watching online. Father, may every person hearing my voice right now, anybody who watches this later in the week, I pray that every person hearing my voice right now would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are created and loved by an amazing God. And Father, as we think about that love and we think about how high and how deep and how wide your love is, how can we do anything but what that song says? And seek you first above everything else. Father, we seek you right now. We pray for Kyle as he preaches your word today. Father, anoint him with your Holy Spirit. Give us ears to hear your truth and hearts that just say yes to whatever you want to speak to us today. We love you, God. We trust you and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Good morning. Good to see all of you here this morning. Good morning to those that are online. Welcome home. If we haven't met, my name is Kyle, and I'm one of the pastors here, and we're glad you're here today. And happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. Hey, if you're a mom, would you just stand really quick? We're not going to embarrass you, but if you're a mother, just stand real quick. Look at all of our mothers. Let's give them a hand today. Thank you. You are awesome, and we couldn't do life without you. Everybody else, amen. Amen. We love you. And also today, it's a, it's a good day for moms, but sometimes Mother's Day can be a hard day. And so if that's you today, maybe you are desiring to be a mother or you can't be with your mother, or maybe you've even lost your mother today. In any one of those cases, we want you to know that we love you and we're thinking of you as well today. We, uh, we actually, we've been in a series, but we're going to take a break from that series today in light of Mother's Day today. And we're going to talk about recipe and ingredients. And I'm just going to, we're going to do some baking here in a minute, but I'm just going to be real with you, okay? I'm not going to promise it's going to turn out good, number one, okay? And number two, I can't multitask very well, okay? So preaching and baking, raise your hand if you're honest enough to say you are not a multitasker. Anybody else? All right, give it up for the men in the room. Good job. <laughs> so I'm going to try, Adam's just said exactly. <laughs> So I'm going to try to do both today, but here's the question we're going to be working off of today when we think about um, just food and recipe and ingredients. Uh, what recipe does God want us to follow as his followers? And this morning, for some of us, we may be thinking, well, what's the significance of that question? Well, the reality is this morning, as Christians or followers of Jesus, our goal is is to follow him and to be like him. And so if we're called to be like him, what recipe does God want us to follow as his followers? And we know that God's word is our moral compass. And God's word is filled with examples of what we're supposed to follow. But Jesus' example in scripture is what we're supposed to follow. And so this morning, we're going to be looking at Jesus' example because we're called to follow Jesus, and we see it, we'll, we're going to hear in just a minute that Jesus followed the Father. In fact, Jesus, his example was to listen to what his Father called him to do. He didn't do anything that God didn't, didn't ask him to do. He followed G God's plan perfectly. So we're going to follow Jesus' example. So when we think about Jesus' example, what example did Jesus actually set during his time on earth what, let's read that red word, ingredients were present in his life. So when we think about ingredients, uh, I'm going to make chocolate chip cookies today. Does anybody like chocolate chip cookies? Yeah, a few of you. I know not everybody does, but that's what we're making today. You know, ingredients are really important because um, I remember in, in high school, I was in a home ec class. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. I wasn't in the home ec class because I wanted to you know, I don't think they call it home ec now. Do they call it like family science now or something? But when I was in school, it was called uh, home ec. And I wasn't in the class to, uh, you know, to, to cook. I was in the class because girls were in the class. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, I'm married, happily married now, but I'll just be honest with you. That's why I was in the class. Uh, it wasn't because I was wanting to learn how to cook. 
But I do remember, just keeping it real, uh, I do remember being in that class, and our group was like making some kind of pie. And the truth was is that they, had, they called for a certain amount of flour, and one of the people in my group, it wasn't me, but one of the people in my group um, forgot, like, put in half, like, instead of putting the full amount of flour, they put in the wrong amount of flour, um, actually quite a bit less than they were supposed to make. And it was soupy, and it was gross, and it wasn't good. And so it's important not only that we have the right ingredients when you're making something, but that you have the right amount of ingredients as well. And you know, Jesus calls us to, to live our life a certain way. Good thing that lid was on there. Okay? My wife has seen me cook before. She's up here gasping. All right? She's up here going, oh, my word, he's going to screw this up. I know it. <laughs> then he's going to give me a cookie at the end, and I have to lie in church and say it tastes good. So I know what you're thinking, babe, because I'm thinking the same thing. But, you know, you got to have the right ingredients, and you got to have the right amount of ingredients, or it just doesn't turn out well. And, you know, we find that recipe um, from God's Word. He gives us, he tells us, how we're supposed to live our lives. He tells us uh, when we need to give grace, when we need to speak truth, when we just need to be compassionate and loving. Those are all, I love these kitchen aids, man. You can just get it done quick. And then you can never have enough chocolate chips. Amen. 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 There you go. Very spiritual, isn't it? So we're going to mix those bad boys up real quick. I feel like I should have my own cooking show. Since we're online right now, I'm Rachel Ray. Good to have all you here. But no, you got to have the right ingredient. Oh, my word, that's a good batch right there. <laughs> Does anybody like raw cookie dough? A few of you, if you come up afterwards, okay, some of our kids got shy last service and they wanted some. I don't care, okay? I'm not going to have you do it now, but at the end, if you want some, you can grab some. But it's important you have the right ingredients, and Jesus calls us to have the right ingredients in our life. Um, and I can't multitask, so I'm just going to scoop these real quick. It is really hard for me not to eat one of them right now. <laughs> and at the end of the service, we're going to give these out uh, to a few people. But you've got to have the right ingredients in order to, to live the life that God's called you to live. In fact, um, we're going to kind of focus on our heart and our mind um, and our knees and our feet, different things that Jesus did. All right, look, not too bad so far. All right, so you want to set it on 375, okay? <laughs> and I had a lady come up afterwards and said, you need to leave him in the oven one more minute. So I, I appreciate her. Uh, for being honest with me about that. That's good. <laughs> but you have, as I said, you got to have the right ingredients. Jesus gives the right ingredients. And so when we look at his life, there was one, there were several things, but one of the most important things about Jesus when it came to, to what the Father wanted him to do was the first ingredient, which is he had a surrendered heart. Let's say that together. A surrendered heart. As we're following Jesus... Jesus had a surrendered heart. He had fully surrendered to what God was calling him to do. In fact, in John, when he's talking, he says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my what? I didn't come to do my own will. He's given his purpose right now. I didn't come to do my own will. Let's read the red words. But the will of him who sent me. Now, if we're going to follow after Christ and, and we're looking at his example and we see his example found in Scripture, we know that what Jesus did was he had a surrendered heart. You know, pride, we all have been filled with pride at some point in our life because sometimes we think of other people that we know that are filled with pride. But the reality is that every one of us at some point have been filled with pride. Have you ever, you know, kids play with Play-Doh? Have you ever tried to, to mold, like, hard Play-Doh? It doesn't work very well, does it? And, you know, pride works the same way in our life. Um, in fact, a surrendered heart 
is really all Jesus is looking for for salvation. We know that there's nothing that we can add to salvation. It's free. But the only way that we can receive salvation, especially if we have someone new watching or that's in here today, the only way we can receive it is through surrender. It's through laying things down and acknowledging that we need a, sur a Savior. A surrendered heart is how we're able to grow in our walk with Jesus. Um, I remember my very first job I ever had. And, you know, your parents prepare you for things. But sometimes having a job, it, you just learn other things. And I remember some people that I worked for saying some things I didn't necessarily want to hear. But I needed to hear. Some of you have had teachers or coaches or people that have said not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Sometimes we resent those people and we think they're a bad teacher, a bad coach, but honestly, they're just trying to bring the best out of us. And so the truth is this morning is that we can't grow in our walk with Jesus if our heart's not surrendered. He can't work with it. But if our heart is surrendered, and this is just true today, if our heart is surrendered and we read things in Scripture that talk to us about our tongue, talk to us about our attitude, talk to us about how we should love our spouse or how we should love our children, or there's even a Scripture in there that says don't exasperate your children. And when we read things like that and our heart is surrendered to Him, instead of getting filled with pride and thinking, well, that's for someone else, we begin to realize, hey, maybe, maybe that's for me. So the very first ingredients, that, and, and Jesus was filled with all kinds of, of things, but the very first thing here is a surrendered heart. The other thing that's interesting is Jesus also had a renewed mind. Uh, say that with me, a renewed mind. Uh, some of you may remember the story uh, in Matthew chapter 4, um, it, it, where he, Jesus quotes uh, God's word. Because a renewed mind is a mind that is filled with God's word. Say that with me. A renewed mind is a mind that is filled with God's word. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is getting ready to prepare to do his ministry. And he goes out into the desert to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, and he, and he becomes tempted by the enemy. Now, when we think, those of us who have grown up in church... We think of Jesus' temptation and we think to ourselves, Jesus wasn't really tempted. He wasn't really tempted. And I tend to believe that too, but the reality is he was tempted. Scripture says that he was tempted. You know, if, for those of you who don't like ice cream, which I think is weird, but for those of you who don't like ice cream, if I stick a bowl of ice cream in front of you, it's not a temptation because you don't like it. I'm not sure why you don't, but you don't like it. In all three instances in Scripture, in Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus is tempted, he is tempted. And you know, Jesus' mind was renewed even though he was being tempted. The, Satan comes at him three different times. His body, his physical body is worn down. He's, he's, you remember the Snickers commercial, right? You won't like me when I'm hungry. I mean, all of us, raise your hand if you get crabby when you're hungry or tired Okay, some of you are pointing at people, okay? We all get that way. I mean, Jesus, from a physiological perspective, was at his lowest point, but his mind was still renewed. And in all three of those instances, you want to know how Jesus overcame it? He quoted scripture. If you read Matthew chapter 4, and you, you, know, and you were to go home and read all that, he quotes scripture. In fact, there's a scripture about having a renewed mind. Paul writes about it. Um, in Romans 12, 2, he says, let God, what does, let God do what? Let God transform you into a new person. Well, how do you do that? Let's read it. By changing the way you think. Let me tell you something, and I'm not just trying to be a Bible thumper, but you, this changes you. When you hide this in your heart, and you're not just reading it to get it done for the day, but you're seeking to understand. You know, this is a love letter to us. I remember when Whit and I first started dating, she would write these things to me. You know, I would read them. God's love letter to us. As we seek to understand, it renews our mind. 
He encourages us. He convicts us. He tells us about his love. It gives us wisdom. When we don't feel like he's there, he whispers through his word. Okay? So he changes the way we think. And then it says this. Because I hear people will say, well, Pastor Kyle, how do I know what God's plan is? How do I know what God's will is? And that's sometimes it's hard to figure out, isn't it? But listen to this. As our mind is renewed, it will help us to learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and what? Perfect. Listen to, this and listen to the totality of this. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. When we follow Jesus, we see that he had a surrendered heart. A renewed mind. And then he, he also he had kingdom eyes. Let's say that together. Kingdom eyes. Now kingdom eyes are eyes that see people and situations like Jesus sees people and situations. I've shared this story before, but years ago I used to golf all the time. And I had a friend of mine named Brett. And we were I was living in St. Louis. And we were getting ready to play golf in our tea time. We were running late behind, for it. And there was a, a lady across the street who'd broke down, and, and I'm the pastor, and he's a lay person in the church. And we're passing by, and Brett says, we need to stop and help her. Now, I didn't say a word, but inside I was like, oh, man, we're going we're gonna to be late. I didn't say anything. But just to be vulnerable here, I didn't have kingdom eyes on. I was wanting to go play golf. But Brett in that moment had kingdom eyes. And you know what we did? We stopped, and we helped push that lady's car out of the road. See, when, we're submitted our, when we submit ourselves to Jesus and we're in constant communication with him, he's always updating us. My kids, are they're playing sports and we have this remind app, you know, remind you for practice, remind you for this, remind you for that. And when we're in constant communication with God on a regular basis, you know what he does? He speaks. And it's not always the big thing about whether we should take the job or not or, or some big heavy thing. It's things like, hey, that person's sitting by themselves. Hey, ask them about me. Hey, I wouldn't say that. Don't even laugh at that joke. That's not appropriate. He begins to speak to us. And we're able to see things through kingdom eyes. A couple examples. I won't spend a lot of time on this. But here's a couple of examples how Jesus had kingdom eyes. We all maybe, some of us remember the story where the woman's caught in the act of adultery. I mean, she's guilty. They rip her from the situation. I mean, this wasn't a couple days later. She's in the act. They rip her from, she probably didn't have any clothes on. They throw her before Jesus. And everybody there is spiritual. They're all religious. They all have their PhDs in legalism. And they look at Jesus and they say, hey, she is guilty. She's not like kind of guilty. Johnny and Eddie over here, they went and got her and they brought her here. And the law says that we're to stone her to death. And Jesus isn't seeing just from a legalistic perspective. He has kingdom eyes. And I'm sure there was a, a pregnant moment where he doesn't say anything. And then all of a sudden he says, I'll tell you what, good, good job, guys. The first person without sin, the first person without sin, you cast the first stone. And one by one, you heard people just begin to drop Drop there. I can't focus because I'm looking at those. <laughs> one by one, they begin to drop their rocks and they walk off. You can almost hear them hit the ground. And again, Jesus is in kingdom eye mode. Woman's over there crying. And he says to her, hey, woman, where are your accusers? She probably didn't even notice they were all leaving. He look, she finally looks up and she's like, well, no one's here. And neither do I condemn you. And then he says to her, go, which is grace. Because she was guilty, right? He says, get up and go, grace. But then kingdom eyes is not just grace. Jesus wasn't just grace. He wasn't just truth. He was always both. So he tells her, go. He says, get up and go. But then he says to her, Go and sin no more. Man, what would happen if you got, some of you right now are dealing with a situation that's heavy. I mean, that's a pretty heavy situation that I just described. Some of you are dealing with some heavy situations. Maybe you're at home and you're watching this. Or maybe you're here. 
And all that, you can't change anything, but maybe today God wants to give you, instead of your eyes, his eyes. Jesus' eyes were kingdom eyes. And then, of course, the last thing real quick. Maybe it's not the eyes of compassion. Maybe it's the eyes of faith. You remember the quick story where Jesus is teaching again, and everybody wants to go to Arby's and get something to eat. I don't think they had an Arby's, but you never know. That was sarcasm. And the disciples are like, look, dude, real good sermon, all right? One of your better ones. Great sermon. But everybody's hungry. We need to go get some food. It's getting dark. They didn't have on kingdom eyes. They didn't see. They, do you know who you're talking to? And you know, they hear the, the, the movie, I'm kind of a big deal. Like Jesus is a big deal. And he looked at them and he said, we got food right here. Nobody got any food except this kid. He's got some fish and some bread. Ain't going to feed 5,000 people. Bring it over here. So Jesus had eyes of faith. He knew what he could do. And the little boy, he didn't have much, but he offered what he had. Amen? And he multiplied it. And scripture tells us that not only was everybody fed, but there were baskets left over. I can't help but think today that maybe it's not the eyes of compassion. I mean, for some, maybe it is. But maybe for you, it's eyes of faith that God is asking you to trust him. You're trying to do the math instead of following the master. And he's asking you to trust him. You can't understand how this is going to work out. You can't understand what God has planned. But yet he's got something planned for you. A big ingredient that God has in his life is having eyes, kingdom eyes. Now here's, here's another one this morning. Jesus had ears that listened. You remember that? I, I grew up in church, and, and, uh, and then as a, we would always quote the scripture, Jesus wept when we were kids. We had to memorize one. Just to let you in on a little secret, the reason I memorized that one is because it was easy to remember. I know that's hard to believe. We take kids to teen camp, and to get on the dock, they have to quote a scripture. Which one do you think they want to quote? It's not that long one. It's Jesus wept, right? But a lot of us don't know what Jesus, we don't know much about that. You know, what, what takes place in that scripture is Lazarus dies, and people are in mourning. He's been dead for four days. And Jesus goes into town, and he's going to go in there, and he's going to raise Jesus, or raise Lazarus to life. And he knows that. But, you know, instead of just going in there and saying, quit your ball and I'm getting ready to, to raise this guy to, lie, to life. He listens to their mourning and their lamenting and their sobbing because we're following his example, right? Some of us, when we're talking to someone, this is sometimes annoying. Well, I've been through it just like you have and it'll get better. People don't want to hear that when they're in the middle of something. They don't need to hear that. Well, I know what you're going through. Do you really? Are you exactly like them? It'll get better, right? And on one level, it will, but they don't need to hear that right now. I mean, if anybody, Jesus could have said, hey, quit your ball in about 10 seconds. I'm going to raise that dude to life. He doesn't do that. He listens to their mourning. He listens to their crying. He identifies with where they're at. And then it says, Jesus wept. Maybe some people in your life, if, if you and I would listen, they don't need you to give them the answers. They need you to lament with them. They need you to sit with them. They need you to identify with them. Listen to what Jesus said about listening. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And I what, church? I know them, and they follow me. You know, my wife and I have been married 20-plus years, and, and we laugh all the time. Like, we know each other so well. It's crazy. And you know what's crazy is some of you have been married longer than us, and you know your spouse the same way, or you know your mom the same way, or you know somebody the same way. But, you know, however, many, however you know someone and they know you, God knows us more. And what would it be like to be in a relationship with Jesus where we don't have to hear him scream at us, but we can hear him whisper at us? 
you know, that still, small voice. So here's one that's going to create tension in the room, okay? We talked about Jesus had a surrendered heart and a renewed mind and kingdom eyes and ears that would listen. Here's one, okay? Jesus had a tongue that honored God. If we're following his example, right? He didn't just speak sunshine and flowers, right? He spoke truth. I mean, we see in Scripture where the Pharisees, who were the religious, they were legalistic, and he looked at them, and he spoke truth to them. And he, but he also gave grace. But in all of his truth-telling and in all of his grace-giving, he never disrespected the person, and he never dishonored God. How about that? I mean, what would happen if we were following Jesus and we had a tongue that honored God? Our prayer life was so close to him that when we wanted to say something, because it was right there on the tip of our tongue, the Holy Spirit we didn't have to scream it at us. He didn't have to send somebody else to send us to counseling to listen to, to try to get us to see it. But he could just say, don't. My dad raises bird dogs. And uh, one time I was watching him, and he had this dog that was in a full sprint going 90 miles an hour, and Dad said, whoa, the dog stopped on a dime. I said, can you get kids to do that? <laughs> Man, what would happen if, if we're like that? Where we're getting frustrated and we're getting angry, and, it's, uh, uh, and God goes, David writes, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let's read those red words, be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock. I'm not going to lie. I'm not perfect at this. And you're not going to lie. You aren't either. But the truth is, we're incapable of this, but the Holy Spirit in us is capable of this. But remember the first ingredient that we talked about, the surrendered heart? This is not happening if our heart's not surrendered. Jesus had a tongue that honored God. Here's another one. Jesus had knees that bent often. Now, he didn't always necessarily bend down and lay on the ground. It's more of a metaphor for prayer. Jesus was in constant communication with the Father. There's a guy that used to go to church here, and I... He's an awesome guy. Some of you still know him. His name's Larry Thornburg. And I grew up in this church, for those that don't know it. I moved away for 10 years and moved back. And when I was a teenager, about my son's age, he started talking to me every Sunday. And he would say this to me. He said, Kyle, how's your prayer life? And when I would look at the ground, he already knew. It wasn't where it needed to be. If I saw Larry today, he would look at me and say, Kyle, how's your prayer life? Because the reason he would ask me that is because he, he, and he was my Sunday school teacher for a while. Prayer is the lifeline to the believer. Conversation. All right? Marriages end not always because there's some great big moral failure. Sometimes there is, right? Sometimes it's just we don't talk anymore. We quit communicating. And you know how we drift apart in our walk with God is we don't communicate. Communication or prayer, right, it has to be intentional. It doesn't just always happen naturally. You know when you're that honeymoon phase of some type of relationship where you can't quit talking all the time. When Whit and I first started dating, we talked on the phone three hours. She couldn't keep me on the phone five minutes now probably. But now with our schedule being so busy, we have to be intentional. And so do you, right? And our walk with God is no different. It's on purpose. I don't know how I could fit another day. I don't know how I fit, could fit another minute into my schedule for prayer. Well, can I tell you? I don't know how you can't put, have time with God. There's too much going on in our lives. Amen? Listen to what Paul writes. Rejoice always. Let's read those red words. Pray without. When I was younger, I used to think that meant like we're sitting around in this prayer posture and we're just praying over and over like we got OCD or something like that. 
That's not what that means. It just means constant communication. You're constantly talking. When I first started dating Wit, she would talk to her mom five, six, seven times a day, just always talking. Anything that went on the other in, during the day, mom knew before I did because they were always talking. I wasn't bitter about it at all. Man, what would happen if we were like that with God? Where we just talk to him, and it doesn't always have to be the heavy things. Just, God, would you get, hey, I'm getting ready to have this meeting. I don't know how this is going to go, but would you just protect me, protect them? Would this just go okay? Just constant communication. One last ingredient. Jesus had hands and feet that served when and where God sent him. We all remember, if we don't, the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus didn't really want to serve the way that God had planned. That's why he said, hey, if there's another way for this to happen, I'm good with it. But then he said, not my will, but your will. In other words, Jesus was resubmitting his heart, his mind, and his life back to him. And he's saying, my hands and feet are wherever you want them to go. And if you want me to climb up on a wooden cross and get nails in my feet and nails in my hand to provide salvation for all of humanity, then I'll do it. Can I just tell you all something that none of us really like, but it's still the truth. We find it as God's word. God's goal for your life and my life is not necessarily to be happy. It's to be holy. It's to be faithful to what he's calling us to do. I shared this story a few weeks ago, but it fits here as well. Several years ago, we took uh, several mission trips out of the country, and one of them, we went and visited this boy's home, and there was these grandparents, this really sharp couple that were running it, and I said, how'd you guys end up here? And they said, well, we were going to church in Tennessee, and the pastor said, we're going to start an orphanage in Dominican Republic. Would anybody pray about going? Of course, we have all kinds of grandkids. We're the last people that would want to go. So when my husband started telling me he was getting tapped on the shoulder to do it, I told him he's crazy. But we continued to pray about it. And God continued to tap. So we're here. What I got from that was they had hands and feet that would serve wherever and whenever God had them. Can I tell you that if God's calling you to something, he's going with you. And when Jesus climbed up on that cross, God was with him. We know there was one specific time where God turned his back on, on Jesus. And that's when Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There was a moment in time where God, that's called propitiation, which is a fancy word for God, literally turned his back on his son and allowed him to bear our sin and bear our shame. So maybe some of you, your heart is surrendered and and you wouldn't say your mind's renewed every moment of every day, but for the most part, you're trying, you feel like your mind's renewed. You try to have kingdom eyes. You, do, you know, you're, you're trying to listen to God's voice. Most of the time, you would say that your words honor him. You could always communicate more with God, but for the most part, you talk to him regularly. But maybe this last one is for you. Maybe God is calling you to do something. And he's been asking you for a while. And you know it. What would happen if you would say yes? Maybe God's calling you. I mean, I have no idea. I don't know why this is coming to my mind. Maybe God's calling you to adopt a baby. And you've said no. Maybe he's calling you to be a foster parent. And you've said no. Maybe he's calling you to quit your job. Not because you're going to be lazy, but because he's calling you to start something. Maybe he's calling you to, to go and forgive someone. Maybe he's calling you to stop being angry at your ex. Maybe he's calling you to trust him with your grief. What would happen today on Mother's Day? It's an easy day to remember. If this would be the day that you would say completely, God, I'm yours. Jesus had a surrendered heart, a renewed mind, kingdom eyes, ears that listened, a tongue that honored God, knees that bent to pray and speak to God, and feet that went and did only 
what his father asked him to do. As the band comes up today, I just want to simply ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We covered a lot of ground today, I know. A lot of ingredients, right? Maybe you identified with all of those or one of those or some of those. But maybe today there was something specific that the Holy Spirit is whispering to you today. And we want to just give you an opportunity just to be obedient to that. So in this silence, right? In this awkward silence, God, where we're just sitting here before you and we're just kind of like, now what? Lord, maybe you're speaking to our hearts. Maybe, Lord, today you're saying something to us. Father, we, we're uncomfortable with quiet sometimes because it's when you can speak. And Lord, if there's someone in here today that you're speaking something specific to them, I pray that they would hear. In fact, today, I don't know if any of you would have the courage to do this, but what would happen right now if you, if you just said to God, speak, Lord, I'm listening. In fact, let's just all say that together. You ready? Speak, Lord. I'm listening. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your spirit is present. And Father, I pray right now that your spirit would be doing work in our hearts and our minds. Thank you for your word. Thank you for its truth. Thank you that you love us. Father, I pray that it wouldn't only just be today, but you would speak to us each day. And Father, I pray that our communication wouldn't just be open in our mouths, but there would be a listening to you speak your truth. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing and acceptable God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand. He's good, isn't he? Well, hey, we're gonna we're gonna give away some cookies today. Just real quick. To some moms. But I gotta give the first one to my wife here. Happy Mother's Day. All right, so here we go. The mother with the oldest child, okay? So here's what I need. If you have a child that's over 50 years old, would you just raise your hand real quick? Anybody have a child over 50, okay? Over 60. Anybody have a child over 60 years old? All right, over 50, oh, over 60? Okay. Uh, over 65? No? How old? How old? How old? 61? How old's yours? 63. Let's give Susan a hand. Good job. So we did the oldest. Now let's do the youngest. The mother with the youngest child. So do we have anybody in here that has a newborn? Any newborns within two or three months? We have one? All right. Let's give them a hand. Good job. One for me, one for you, one for me, one for you. Okay. Now this one, they're getting, I've been given two cookies. I'm giving this lady three. Okay. This is the mother with the most kids. All right? And your kids can't eat these. These are for you. Okay? So how many, do we have any moms in here that have at least five kids? Raise your hand. Five, okay. Six, I feel like an auctioneer. Six. six. Does anybody have more than six? You are cleaning up on cookies today. She's like, I'm glad I came to church. Okay, the mother with the craziest kid. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, 
All right, the mother whose kids travel the farthest to be here today, all right? So did anybody have, mom, does anybody ha uh, have a kid that traveled three hours to be here? Three? How many hours? 12. Anybody be 12? Anybody be 12? Drop the mic, give her a hand, that's awesome. Hey, let's stand together this morning.
our voices holy Once again, we're grateful to be in your presence today. It's solely by your grace that you invite us into your presence. It's solely by your grace that we can have a relationship with you, that we can pray to you and have a conversation with you. It's solely by your grace that we can follow you through all the ups and downs of this life right into eternity in your presence. We thank you for that grace today. Truly, you have no equal, God. You're unmatched in your wisdom, in your power, in your love. You have no equal. And we thank you for the blessing of praising you and worshiping you together in this place today. We do thank you, Father, for our mothers and for all the ladies in our lives who have played a part in shaping who we are. Pray that they would indeed have a blessed, wonderful day today. 
And Father, for those who are hurting today for various reasons, for those who are grieving on this Mother's Day, I pray that they would know you today in your peace and in your comfort and in your presence. Pray that you'd be especially close to them today. So Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for the gift of a church family. We thank you for the gift of this moment right now. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Again, thank you for worshiping with us today. I know some of you are probably from out of town, came to, to worship with us with your mom. Thank you for joining us. If you are from the area and you don't have a church home, we would love for you to come back and worship with us again next week. And if you are visiting with us today or if you're new to Pitt Naz and haven't done this yet, uh, if you would, please take out a Connect card from the seat pocket in front of you. Take a minute, fill that out, put it, put it in one of the gray offering boxes on the wall on your way out. I promise we will not flood your inbox or your phone with 8 billion messages, I promise. Uh, but we would love to know that you're here and, and be able to welcome you. So um, please, please consider doing that. You can also download the Church Center app and you can fill one out there as well. Also, if you brought an offering with you today, thank you for doing that. We'd like to ask you to, again, drop that in one of the offering boxes. You can also give through the Church Center app and through uh, the church website. And as always, we thank you for your donations. Thank you for your, uh, your generosity and your sacrifice. Well, we've got a few quick announcements. Now, this first announcement in first service, I, I bungled this up so bad, Kyle thought about firing me on the spot, but he decided not to because he was having so much fun laughing at me. So, yes, he was. He just submitted it. So, tomorrow, May 9th, 6.30, we're having a meeting uh, to continue our conversations about starting a recovery ministry here at Pitnaz. We're in the very, very early stages of that trying to think through and pray through what that might look like here. And so uh, we want to invite you, anybody who's interested, uh, come here to the church tomorrow, 6.30, and uh, we'll be uh, having some, some more conversations about that. And then finally, this, this week, this Wednesday night, is our last normal Wednesday night for our kids and our adults and our teens. Um, everybody will be taking the, the rest of May off, and then... Uh, some kind of kind of lighter, more fellowship-oriented things will be starting up in June for our kids and teens. And uh, for our kids, it'll be at 6.30 uh, on Wednesdays here at the church. And uh, Pastor Gene is calling that the family table. And families of all kinds, all shapes and sizes are invited to participate in that. There'll be something, uh, something a little bit different planned for each of the five Wednesdays in June. So I hope that you can make that. Check out the Church Center app, again, for more information on that. So, like we said, we've got some cookies today for all the ladies who are with us. And if I talk, those of you who I talked to about handing those out, if you can meet me in the copy room here in just a second, and then uh, Kyle's got something to close us out with. That's right. Well, hey, first thing before I get to that, you know, God gives us gifts and abilities, and I just enjoy so much listening to Kyle use his gift and ability. This guy, I don't know if you noticed, yeah, give Kyle a hand. That was awesome. <laughs> He plays that thing like it's an electric guitar, and so I just appreciate that. We're so gifted, uh, so we appreciate with that. Hey, many of you know that we're here last week, uh, that we had a little incident in the service, and I just want to bring some closure to that. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, we had someone come in and was raising their voice and, and different things. It was There was no gun or anything like that. They just had, had were going through some stuff, hurt people, right? And uh, we got an email this week with apology and just reconciliation there. So we want to give God a hand for that. Let's give God a hand. That was awesome. We're here for hurting people, amen? We're here for hurting people. And also with that, just to give you guys some comfort to know, we never made it public, but for the last year and a half, we've had a security team. And so we want to thank them. They handled that situation really quickly. So let's give them a hand. And also, if, you know, we don't think about this, but we ask for people to serve at the doors. We ask people to serve with hospitality. And we need people to serve on the security team. Um, we have a rotation for any of the rest of our workers. And we would love to be able to have enough people that would work on the security team that we could have a rotation. So maybe once a month you serve instead of somebody having to serve every single Sunday, if that makes sense. 
So if you're interested in doing that, fill out a Connect card, market uh, security team, and we'll have someone from that group come and talk to you and, and, and do all that. So anyway, hey, that was kind of something, but let me just tell you this. Happy Mother's Day. Call your mom, text your mom, take your mom out to lunch, make them feel special today. Let's stand together this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and bring you peace. Have a great day.